Good morning, everybody. I want to, uh, this is finished up. I got this guy back together. Show you. So this guy's all back together this morning. Well, yesterday it was all back together. So this is pretty much ready to go back on the bike. This is all I'm gonna do to it at this point. I think we're, I think it should work. I wanna do some more wiring stuff today. There's a, some more mouse chewed wires we need to address. Which is convenient, because I've still got my big box of ele electronics out. So yeah, over here on this radiator, there were some, there were some chewed wires somewhere. I think they were down in here somewhere, but we can get this radiator off and we'll take a closer look. The hoses are attached on this sucker. <laughs> My little quarter inch wrench here yet. Yeah, this thing is all stripped out. I need to uh, replace it or get it fixed. Somebody was nice enough in the comments to let me know that the uh, Craftsman still does honor the warranty where they'll replace this wrench in theory, they should. So I just need to take it in. I did check at Harbor Freight uh, the other day when I was there. That's the, the only part, you know, parts store, whatever I've been to recently and so I checked there and then uh, they've got sockets, quarter inch sockets there, like the cheapest ones, like 10 bucks. So it's not really a major thing. Holy crap. Getting the hoses off of here is no small feat. What was I thinking? What was I thinking putting these on here already? Crap. I mean, I can make it turn, but God, it's like they're glued on. All right, there's one off. Two, all right. That's something. There's that. Yeah, it's just the ability to like rotate something, either the, the radiator or the tube. Otherwise, you cannot get that off. All right, so this guy's still plugged in. I'll unplug him. All right, now we can see our little wires right here are all chewed up. So we'll take them over to the bench and make an assessment on how, how deep we need to get here to fix that. So I find this kind of interesting that there's a fan only on one of the radiators, not on the other. I realize they're connected and everything and it shouldn't make a huge difference, but in terms of the efficiency of cooling, it, clearly having two fans would be cooler. Like literally would cool stuff off better. I'm sure there's a, a very simple math equation there that tells you how much cooling you actually need and that this, this qualifies. Why do they even need two radiators then? Like there's something, <laughs> something there, I don't know. All right, so I need to disconnect these to some degree. Looks like they're just in these little, they're just sort of shoved in here. All right, so this is my worst one. So this guy here is my worst one where it's been stripped off pretty good. And there is some copper missing off of there. So I probably should replace that. It would, it, it probably, it's like right on the edge, right? I feel like it, I, it probably would be fine. There's enough copper in there, but for uh, the sake of perfectionism, I will replace that section there. So let's get stuff undone. I'm gonna undo this guy down here. Oh, that just sort of snaps on there. All right. So our little temperature sensor here should just pop right off, yeah. Now, now we have better access to all these wires here so I can better tend to this. Unwrap this so we can better see what, which one's which. All right, so that's the one that goes to the temperature sensor. So that one's pretty important. So I'm probably just gonna snip this out, put some shrink wrap on there and put another section in and get that done that way. Make sure I've got the appropriate wire. So I've got my little bin here. It turns with black wire, some fatter black wire. 
There's actually not a lot of black wire in here, believe it or not. Also got this whole bag of like brand new wire. Might be what we're looking for. But yeah, I think it looks like the same diameter. I think I'm gonna go with this guy. As we noted yesterday, I don't need, I'm not gonna need much. I need like snip out like an inch of this thing. This little extra protective layer on the outside off. Try and pull this back a little bit if I can. So you can see that there's, we've literally got like seven strands of copper left. I'm not sure how many were there in the first place, but I'm gonna cut those off. Now we'll strip this back again. It's the same stuff we did yesterday, so lots of electrics this week, um, which may be a good thing. I don't know if people are entertained by that because I know that's one of the, probably the most common like thing that people have trouble with is the electronics. I've certainly gotten comments and stuff on that before. I mean, I've even heard stories about like people doing a bike build or whatever and they get to the electronics and that's where the build stops. <laughs> like no more bike build, it never gets finished. It just sits for years or whatever unfinished because the electronics just stump them. Um, which I get, they're not like, it's definitely confusing. Um, if you try and do electron, I would never try and do electronics without a wiring diagram. Like that is a must. Whew. I gotta go to the bathroom, man. All right, we're back. The, um, yeah, electronics, man. There's not been a single build where I don't need a wiring diagram where a wiring diagram isn't like the most useful thing ever. I'm gonna slide this off a little bit and I'm actually gonna snip it down, shorten this thing up, make my life a little bit easier because this is not allowing me the room I need. All right, so this guy, prep this a little bit, get him on there. It is funny how like, jacked I am in the morning. Like, I like to get stuff done first thing. I have all kinds of energy first thing in the morning. And I don't drink coffee either. <laughs> um, exercising is like my coffee, dude. Like, I get some exercise in and that wakes me up. Gets the blood pumping. And then, uh, then I come out here and then I'm like this. Which I realize is not that hyper compared to a lot of other people. I'm a pretty mellow dude, but uh, but yeah, I'm like I'm ready to go for me. So there's one end there, the other end. Hello, it's right here. The heat tape. I want to make sure I get this stuff on here early. So let's see. How much of this am I gonna need? Probably this whole thing. All right, so the other section that we need, the new section, yeah, should be about this long. This is a piece of the old stuff here. Let's snip this away. Yeah, that should be pretty good there. Ready? Ready to live a new life, little buddy. Yeah, I like to, I always feel like productive, man. In the morning, typically. I don't know, today's just a good day. Today I am have a particularly optimistic outlook. I don't know why. Maybe today's the day I win the lottery. You'd have to actually play the lottery to win it, and I have not been playing lately. I do, sometimes, because I have dreams. <laughs> I have hopes, man. I also have wants and desires, and I have like, people I'd like to take care of, all that stuff. Um, all right, so yeah, this whole thing could just go on here. It's, now's a good time to try and slide that on, see if I can get it. Oh, we're in a conflict with this other one. This other one is preventing me from moving forward in life. Um, 
Yeah, if I could just get it one to go inside the other. Which one wants to go inside? That is a lot to ask. For one of these to go inside the other is a lot to ask. Yeah, there's no like good way of going about this. Yeah, this is problematic. All right, so I'm gonna have to trim. The only solution is to trim this back some more. And then we'll have to heat shrink stuff on the top of it. Somewhere in here, buddy. And then I'm just gonna have to uh, I'm just gonna have to throw some heat shrink over the top of that, some big fatty heat shrink, which I might as well get that out now in order to sort of compensate for that. I'll throw this guy over the top of all of this and then we'll bring it back over when we are done and shrink that down to sort of cover up the stuff we are now getting rid of. All right, so there, that exposes some of the wire that we want. We've got some heat shrink down there. We've got some heat, smaller heat shrink there. Now I can move ahead with life. Get that guy out. Get another little connector out. Yeah, so I've had some pretty like, some severe dietary <laughs> problems. Like I am allergic to, or I haven't, not, not technically allergic because that, that has specific medical definition or whatever, which I am more intolerant to certain things where I just have major digestive problems with stuff. Um, and what those things are, nobody knows. Milk is high on the list of things I cannot eat or consume. Like, and I think it's always been like that. It's interesting, like as you get older, like you, like my body has changed, man. And like, it will straight up not tolerate at all like milk at this point. Whereas when I was younger, I used to live on like cereal, you know, like with straight up like cow milk. This is before they had nut milk. I used to have that multiple times a day, like just consuming like just tons of milk, really. I always had digestive problems though. Like even back then, I just, I was young and I just kept moving. I thought I didn't, I didn't know it was a big deal. You know, I didn't know any better. I just kept going. And so, but I've, I've had like diarrhea my entire life. It's insane. Up until just recently where I stopped, I stopped. I don't drink milk. I don't have any dairy product stuff at all. Um, except for cheese. I've recently tried to, I've integrated cheese back in and I'm good with that. Like that I can tolerate. Can't tolerate milk, man. Milkshakes, milk of any kind, ice cream. It's all a no-go. Which, ice cream is really good, dude. But I cannot have it. I can have pizza. And that is gl glory to God. I can have pizza. Because <laughs> I love, that's got to be my favorite thing, pizza. But it's not just milk. It's like other stuff, too, man, that really bothers me. Motherfucker. God damn it. All right. I did not crimp that very well. I'm gonna pull it off. Gotta get it off of here and put another one on. Oh, that is annoying. All right. Maybe I won't talk to you while I'm doing this. All right, that's good and tight. Now I can put this guy over the top. Slide him over as far as I can here and we will shrink that down. And then we'll shrink down the other one over the top of this stuff. Heat shrink is fun, isn't it? Let's like a magic thing, really, heat shrink, where it just 
goes down like this, just shrinks down perfectly like that. All right, and let that cool a little bit and then we'll get this other one over the top. And then this guy, we, I could possibly depin this one over here. I could definitely depin this guy. So let's, let's do that. I'll depin this and then uh, I can, it'll allow me to slide this little sheath over here out it should and then uh i come in here and slide in some some heat shrink and cover that stuff back up again re-insulate it and then we're good because this one doesn't need much more than that doesn't need anything more than that that should be adequate this is a nice simpler this is like an old simple connector and it's interesting how this bike has both where it has some more advanced connectors, waterproof connectors, and then these that are not waterproof. I bet you on all modern modern bike bikes, you would find nothing but waterproof connectors. Like I don't know if they just became cheaper or what. I'm not sure I needed to do that. Um, Cause yeah, only one of these needs to come out. Oh, no, they both need it. But I really should only do one at a time. Cause otherwise, I can forget which order these are in. Like I just, I was just about to do. All right, so that was clearly on there like that. Stick that one back in and we're gonna do the other one first. We're gonna do one of these at a time. This one does have some exposed wires on it. I swear I just saw that somewhere like, yeah, right here. It's just barely, just barely chewed. Like you can, there's hardly any copper exposed, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover that back up. Get, uh, get some heat shrink out. I don't know if I'll be able to get, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get that on there so i have to use some some bigger heat shrink but i only need like part of this so I'll cut this in half slide this guy over that's fun and you can also see like it melts out the end and you can kind of see that it has a good seal there all right, so this guy I'm putting back in here and then we'll take out the other one. All right, now I should be able to go back to this other one and heat shrink that real quick. There he is, that's beautiful. Now, coming back to this guy. Now I should be able to clip this here, pull it off. This may be a major pain to get back on. I just, I understand that. And we'll see what happens here. All right, so we've got some exposed copper there, but I don't think it's enough to uh, warrant snipping it, that section out. I'm just gonna cover it back up with some more heat shrink. Get this guy in here like that. And then let's see if we can get this back on because this is uh, this is definitely not going to be simple i don't think it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get this on because mainly because it's such a long piece we have to go through the shorter it is the easier it is the more likely of success but as it gets longer this is more and more difficult oh yeah so i'm up about halfway now it's like, no, yeah, the, uh, the physics are starting to get against me here. I'm trying to make it as straight of a shot as possible. Oh, we're like two thirds of the way. It's like three quarters, 90% there. Oh my God, almost, should almost be able to see it there. But yeah, there we go. We got it. Came out, came back to life. So now I can slide this stuff down. I could probably get some other, some fatty heat shrink, some more fatty heat shrink to go over this whole thing. All right, it 
does not want to go All right there we go let's shrink it we are refurbished man let me put this back together with this guy back to your home little friend uh, the wiring diagram is really useful because in situations like this, all right, so say I plug this, these things in backwards into the wrong spot because there was a second there where I took them apart. Uh, so in that case, like one of the things, there's multiple things you can do. The wiring diagram helps out a lot. You can make sure that um, you can, it'll tell you what color wires are supposed to be here. That's one simple thing. But also with those colored wires, even without the wiring diagram, I can go, like this one has a, an all black wire and all it has a black with a blue stripe wire. And so I can, even without the wiring diagram, go to the other end of this connector that's still on the bike at this point, And I can look at the wire colors on that one. And I can make sure, cause this connector only goes in to the other connector a certain, certain way, one way. And so, by orienting the connector, I can see if I have the, the color wires match up because I should on the other side have the same color wires. It should, should be an all black and a black with a blue stripe. Most likely, sometimes, sometimes on bikes, they do swap wire colors on the other side of a connector. Sometimes that happens. The wire, not they don't swap, but they change. Like it could be, it could, there's a possibility. I've seen this before where it has like it could be all, it could be black wires over here and then green wires over here. Cause those are both sometimes used for like ground and whatnot. So, or it could be brown. Brown is also a ground color a lot of times. So there are multiple ways to sort of double, double check your work, which I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to plug this, try and sort of wire these or put these guys back to where they, where they were, where they sort of wrapped around. This guy here gets plugged back in, our temperature sensor. And this guy goes back onto the bike. All right, so over here on my wire connector, yeah. <laughs> so this is a great example of what I was just talking about. This guy here, a wire connector you can see this one has a green wire on this side of it where it had an all black wire on the other side of the connector. It does luckily have still have the blue and black wire on this side of the connector as well. So I can line up that blue and black wire, make sure this one comes down and on this side of the connector, it's still blue and black. So make sure I've got this wired correctly. Um, yes. So blue and black is the same on both sides. So we should be good there. I did not mess that up. Just double checking myself. All right, so radiator mount. Oh, we got another wire. All right, so this wire also needs to be repaired. Wait a minute. What is going on here? This is a, so I've got this random wire here that looks like an aftermarket add-on by somebody. I don't even need that wire. It looks like it went went to this switch that somebody added on. See, I've got this switch that somebody at some point added on there. So I'm thinking I just get rid of that wire. That's what I'm thinking. So yeah, like this type of connector, this is totally, this is not stock. They would never use this type of connector on a factory connection, so. That I don't need, I'm gonna remove that. And that was an easy fix, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this, put the radiator back. I'm not gonna plug it into the hoses though this time. Just gonna set it back up here. There is that guy. Ah, we've made some improvements, some small improvements once again. It's small improvements a little bit at a time. That's how we get things done, man. That's how ultimately this bike, before we know it, 
comes together. Let's do the other radiator. Let's get that off of there. Similar story with the hoses. I've gone ahead and tightened everything down. I probably should not have gotten too crazy already. But I was having so much fun though, you know? Like it was so exciting to have it come back together. Even though I'm gonna take it apart again. It was just, it was nice to live in that moment for for just a little bit. So I need to get all the little plastic bits off of here. So these rubber bits need to come out as well. Now we can slide the plastic bit off. All right, so let's take a closer look at this thing. Kind of see what I'm dealing with here, where this has got this little separation sort of crack right on the top there. And it's almost like, it's also a little bit, a little bit bubbly on the top here as well. Which, what the heck is that? Why is it bubbling like that? So there's that little, so there's that little crack there that I'm gonna try and I want to address. And then down here on the other end, we've also got a similar sort of separation going on. It's just weird. And maybe we'll find out that this radiator is no good today i don't know let's sort of pry into this and see see what's going on we're gonna try to clean it up and this seems to be all coolant stuff in here which makes me think that this is this the coolant does run through this channel up here i'm not sure how <laughs> doesn't look like it should. Maybe, I don't know, that's just weird. Yeah, I do not understand what's going on here. It seems to be flaking up on the ends here. Like there's all this bubbling and flaking action happening. And underneath that seems to be coolant. Yeah, so I'm just like peeling up these layers as much as I can. Or like where it bubbles up, I'm trying to like peel that stuff off. And it's weird because this clearly feels like aluminum or a very thin layer of some other metal like I don't know why they would galvanize an aluminum, piece of aluminum, but it almost feels like a galvanization layer on top here that I'm peeling up, but it's also like, stuff is like attached, like this is like attached right to that layer, this stud here, and so why would that be, you know? Like, so I'm just sort of peeling that stuff up and seeing what's left. That's kind of my plan at the moment. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on with this thing. This guy's literally riveted on there. Like right there, and so theory, like, this doesn't need to be welded. This is just riveted on. Like literally, that's all that's holding it on there. And I should just be able to bend that back and be done. But this one, I probably don't have to weld anything, really. I was just looking for an excuse to weld things. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm just gonna do the hoopty thing and sort of slap this back in there as is. Try and bend this stud back. To a degree, it's a cost-benefit ratio thing I'm working on at the moment because is it worth messing with? I don't know. I mean, basically, will this thing leak or won't it leak? I don't know. That bent back really easy. <laughs> I don't know. This it feels really solid, man, but I don't know. I mean, it's barely on there 
originally, apparently. Oh, uh, there's also been this little connector back as well. So everything's straightened back out. But will it leak is my question. In theory it shouldn't, but it might. And how durable will this stuff be? I mean, like I said, it's barely holding anything on in the first place. I, mainly the hoses hold this thing on there. So as long as it doesn't leak, we're good. And I put in like zero effort. <laughs> and then if it ends up leaking, I'll probably just, because of the, the nature of repairing this, I don't know, we'll, we'll consider it at the time and see where, if it does leak, like where it's leaking. So yeah, that's it, man. That's all I'm gonna do today.